All right, so uh, we saw in a previous video that uh, we calculated this value as the equilibrium concentration of nitrogen monoxide at room temperature in the air, okay? Extremely small, right? So we know that smog, which uh, here's a component of smog, is, uh, you know, it comes from car exhausts, you know, that's one contributor to it. And uh, what happens is it's this same reaction produces nitrogen monoxide. However, instead of uh, having this very small value for the equilibrium constant, let's see, this is at 25 degrees C, um, we get a greater production of nitrogen monoxide. And the reason for that is when you bring in the nitrogen and the oxygen into the, the engine of your a car where it is um, igniting the oxygen to burn it with the, to burn the fuel, all right? Some of that oxygen will react with the nitrogen and it reacts to a greater extent because it's hot, okay? So what we see is there's a temperature dependence of this value, um, the equilibrium constant, all right? So it turns out for this reaction um, at, uh, let's see, this would be, well, I'll just write it in Kelvin, at 900 Kelvin, uh, this value is 6.7 times 10 to the minus 10th. Okay, so you can see it's still a small number, but much larger than this number. I mean, 20 orders of magnitude, 21 orders of magnitude larger than at room temperature. Okay, so uh, whether or not this value is comparable to the uh, conditions inside your engine, I can't speak to that, but um, we can at least do a calculation here and see uh, the effect of temperature on, uh, on the products, okay? So I'm just going to use uh, what we did before and modify it slightly. It, we would set all of this up the same way. We have the initial concentrations. The final concentration is gonna be 2x, concentration of NO. We plug that in here, assume it's still going to be negligible. We can go back and verify that. Um, and so when we calculate this now, up to this point, instead of being 4.5 times 10 to the negative 31st, it'll be 6.7 times 10 to the negative 10th. So we're just going to substitute that in there. And so instead of uh, this calculation there, what we're going to have is um, we'll have the square root of 6.7 times 10 to the negative 10th times 0 0.0002835, that's the product of our concentrations of the reactants, divided by 4, and that gives us a value um, for x of about 2.2 times 10 to the minus seventh, okay? But we multiply that by two to get our concentration of NO, and this ends up being 4.4 4 times 10 to the minus uh, 367, okay? So you can see it's still small, but it increased by 10 orders of magnitude, all right? That's quite a lot, uh, a major increase where this is at 25 degrees and this is um, at 900 Kelvin, okay? Or uh, about uh, 627 uh, degrees C, all right? So, um, 
let's uh, let's do this one more time at even a higher temperature okay because at um, 2300 Kelvin okay about 2000 degrees C it's 1.7 times 10 to the minus third okay still less than one so it's still reactant favored even at that very high temperature but now we're talking about measurable concentrations okay um, and so this is definitely going to be significant let's see what this comes out to be all right so uh, we do that same calculation here that we had a, a bit ago where we have the square root of this time 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3 times 0 0.0002835 divided by 4 and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my multiplier on there at the end and so what we have is 6.9 times 10 to the minus fourth okay times 10 to the minus fourth molar at uh, 2300 Kelvin okay so now here we're definitely talking about significant concentrations and I mean if you were breathing this you would not want to breathe that concentration of nitrogen monoxide Right? But we do need to verify our um, assumption. Okay, We assume that X would be negligible in comparison to these values. Right? And uh, here, times 10 to the minus 7th, well, that's still you know several places out here. We only have uh, four decimal places, um, so we're good there. 